إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا ما يهده الله فلا مدلل له وما يدلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الذي تساءلون به والارham ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم وما يوت الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان استك الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدى هدى محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار once again all praise is due to Allah i magnify him and i glorify him and there's no one that we should dedicate our life except for him, Allah Ta'ala. And I bear witness that the last of messengers that was sent to guide mankind from the darkness into the light was Al-Mustafa, Al-Ameen, Abu Qasim, Al-Sadiq, Al-Masduq, Salawatullahi wa Salaam Alayhi, the Messenger of Allah. And in one al-yawm, the topic for today, my dear brothers, is the very sad topic of the ummah or a ummah with no ears brings me to tears. An ummah with no ears, it brings me to tears. And as the Arabs, they say, mulahava. And every single lecture when I was a young kid studying Arabic, the sheikh would say at the end of the tape, mulahava, mulahava, pay attention. Pay attention. Something important is coming. Mulahada. Pay attention. Pay attention. Are you listening? Pay attention. Are you listening? When I was a young kid and I wasn't doing what I was supposed to be doing inside the house, I would get a, a little reminder from my father. My father would say, pay attention. Are you listening? Pay attention. Are you listening? Yahwan, today we came here to talk about Sami'na wa ata'na. Sami'na wa ata'na. Sami'na wa ata'na. We hear and we obey. But unfortunately, yeah, well, there's also Sami'na wa asayna. Sami'na wa asayna. Sami'na wa asayna. We hear and we disobey. Mulahada. Pay attention. Are you listening? There is something, Ya Ikhwan, we're doing some investigation called Al-Haqq al samat The right of the listener, Ya Ikhwan. But before we go into that, we just want to show you how important it is, Ya Ikhwan, about 
following the orders and how serious this is. There is a famous country, you fill in the gaps, who follows or followers when they get an order from the people in charge. What do they say? Yes, sir. We're going this way. We're going to do this. Yes, sir. We're going to do that. Yes, sir. But now when it comes to the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, ya akhwan. Well, brother, I know the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said that, but, you know, brother, my madhab, it says this, brother. Or my sheikh, he said that, brother. Or my alam, he said this, brother. Sami'na wa asayna. Sami'na wa asayna. Sami'na wa asayna. We can fall into this ayah, ya akhwan. Just like some of the previous generations before. So these people, ya akhwan, when they get an order, they say, yes, sir. They don't question it. Never will you see someone in the lower ranks questioning people on the top of the ranks. But not the Ummah of Muhammad, sallam. we got something else we want to say. The Sahaba used to be like this. Sama'na wa ata'na. They heard something from Rasulullah's mouth. Sama'na wa ata'na. We hear, we obey, O Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa That's how much reverence that they had for the Nabi Allah. For us, ah, it's just sunnah. And I've heard Muslims say, ah, it's just sunnah. It's not in the Quran, it's just the sunnah. It's just the sunnah. It's only sunnah, brother. You don't got to do it. Wala hawla wala quota illa billah. Ya khwan, in the second generation, the Tabi'in, Ridwan alayhi alayhim, ajma'in, they also said, sama'na wa ta'na. And the third, they said the same thing. So the question comes, ya khwan, what happened after that? One may wonder, what happened to the ummah? We are talking about sama'na wa ata'na and sama'na wa asayna. So ya khwan, we have been blessed with many faculties. The ability to think, the ability to see, to talk, to walk, and even to listen. Many of the people, they take these things for granted. They even abuse them and misuse them. And what can we say after that is Allahu Mustaan. Allahu Mustaan. Many seem to hear what they want to hear. Many seem to hear what they want to hear. No means yes. Yes means no. And even the non-Muslims now, they're talking about this, that no means no. It doesn't mean maybe so, yes. So for us, ya akhwan, no should mean no, and yes should mean yes. And there is something very popular here in North American culture, ya akhwan, where you see a monkey, where the monkey goes, see no evil, hear no evil, and speak no evil, ya akhwan. So within the society, ya akhwan, we have looked at this. And it has been said that we have two ears and one mouth. So it is intended to listen more, you can learn from others. So speak less and listen more. Mulahada. Mulahada. Pay attention. Are you listening? And Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anhu went on to say, Ayyuhal Sa'ir. Istamir, thumma istafhim, thumma astaykin, thumma istamil. He said, O questioner, listen first and then understand. Then believe and put what you have learned into practice. We have heard, but have we listened? We have read, but have we practiced? We have seen, but have we believed? And if we've believed, have we seen, ya ikhwan? Haq, a folk, a jami'ah. This is the principle that the Arabs they used to say. Al haq, folk, a jami'ah. That the truth is above everyone and everything. So if you hear, call Allah Ta'ala, call the Nabiya Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that Allah, as the Arabs say, Allah ayn wa rats. On the top of our head, ya ikhwan. So thus we realize that the key to understanding Believing and putting things into practice is our hearing. Therefore, hearing can be considered our social sense. And in this sense, it can be considered more important, ya akhwan, even than the eyes, ya akhwan. So we have some ayat, my dear brothers. And the first ayat is, we call Allah Ta'ala, with the name of Shaitan Rajeem, Rahim. Allah Ta'ala goes on to say, Innama kana qawlul mu'mineen idha da'u ilallahi wa rasulih liyahkuma baynahum. 
أن يقول سمعنا وأتعنا وأولئك هم مفلحون 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 يا إخوان يا إخوات the only statement that the true believers that they are when they are called to Allah and His Messenger to judge between them they say we hear and we obey سمعنا وأتعنا as for the other ayah, ya ikhwan, وَإِذْ أَخَذْنَا مِثَاقَكُمْ وَرَفَعْنَا فَوْقَكُمُ الْطُورِ خُذُوا مَا أَتَيْنَكُمْ بِقُوَّةٍ وَاسْمَعُوا قَالُوا سَمِعْنَا وَأَسَيْنَا وَأُشْرِبُوا فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ الْإِجْلَ بِكُفْرِهِمْ كُلْ بِئْسِمَا يَأْمُرُوكُمْ بِهِ إِمَانَكُمْ إِن كُنْتُمْ مؤمي مين إن كنتم مؤمنين and when they took their covenant and they raised over the mount saying take what we have given you with determination and listen they said we hear and we disobey and in their hearts absorb the worship of the calf because of their disbelief how wretched is that which your faith enjoys upon you if you should be, deli- be believers, Yahwan. Yahwan, as a new Muslim who came from Christianity, I have seen with these two eyes. I've witnessed it. I've heard it. I've seen it. If you were to bring a big golden calf here and you say to the Muslims, worship this, most of the Muslims would say, no, I'm not going to worship it. This is shirk. But I've seen with my eyes in the Muslim countries. I've seen this. It's not something that I heard. I heard it and actually after that I seen it. I seen Muslims making sujood. A'udhu billah. To the grave of a so-called saint, ya ikhwan. So when these ayat come, ya ikhwan. Oh, that's for, that ayat is specific for Ahlul Kuf. Ya ikhwan, the Muslims can become mushrikeen if they leave. The deen of Allah and they follow another path, ya ikhwan. Someone born with Islam who even memorized the Quran as I was in this special masjid in a beautiful city and I almost slipped and said where it was because I don't want to pick on any ethnicity. And the people from this village, they recite the Quran with the most beautiful tajweed that'll make you cry. But I went into this masjid and I seen the people bringing picnic baskets for the so-called saint to leave food there and making sujood and ruku to a person who died two, three hundred years ago. Coming from the background of Christianity, I want to ask you guys, what's the difference? Ayat are being recited. And the Muslims are? Sami'na wa asayna. Ya ikhwan, we need to wake up. Istayqin, if you're not him, ya ikhwan. Shirk came many generations after those beautiful people after the time of Adam. And it crept in slowly, ya ikhwan. And it became something that they considered it good. Shaitan came and he whispered to them, just make some statues. They were righteous people so you can remember them generations later. And then the people, they started to worship those idols, ya ikhwan. Good people ended up becoming mushrikeen and their generations became mushrikeen generations later. Yahwan, Muslims have been in North America for a very long time. A lot longer than many people actually think. History has proven that Muslims have been in North America for at least seven, eight hundred, nine hundred years. They've been coming back and forth. La shak fidalik. But what we do know, and it's been historically written for fact, is that some Muslims came here in the 1927, Yahwan. And we see from the Muslims that have come, and I've met some people, and when I bumped into them and I seen their name, Lucy Muhammad, are you Muslim? I'm not Muslim. No, I'm not Muslim. My grandfather, he used to be a Muslim. But I'm not Muslim anymore. Ya khwan, mulahadha, pay attention. Are you listening? Mulahadha, pay attention. Are you listening, Ya Ikhwan? Life is very fast, Ya Ikhwan. How many ayat, how many hadith, how many aqwal, 
have we heard in our lifetime? How many have we heard? 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 But have we listened with our heart, ya ikhwan? Wa qala Allah ta'ala, Kul huwa alladhi ansha'akum wa wa ja'ala lakum as-sam'a wal absar wa af'ida qalilan ma tashkurun. Say, it is he who has created you and made you grow and made for you faculties of hearing, of seeing, and the intellect is also could part, part of the heart. And understanding, little thanks do they give. Alhamdulillah. حمد كثير وطيب مبارك كما يحبه ويرضى الله. My dear brothers, my dear sisters, اسمعوا. Listen. One of the things, يا إخوان, studying the Arabic language, يا إخوان, is very interesting. We have the معلم, we have the مشيخ, but يا إخوان, there used to be something called the مؤدب. The Prophet Sallallahu he had with him the Mu'addib. He had a few of them. The Mu'addib is the true and officer, the one that will keep the people in check. And, I, and, uh, <clears throat> and Umar ibn Khattab, Hamza, and many great Sahaba, Ridwan Allah, when the Muslims were trying to straighten out their lines, they had men of the Sunnah to say, get in line, straighten out, get in order. And this is something, Ya Ikhwan, that we are missing, Ya Ikhwan. People to put us in check when we fall out. I'm in need of it sometimes. Sometimes you're needing it. We're all in need, Yahweh. And sometimes we fall off the path. We need to be put back in check, Yahweh. Why? Pay attention. Are you listening? We call Allah Taala. Inna sama wal basar wa fuada kulu ulaika kana anhu masula. Surely the hearing and the sight and the heart, all of these shall be questioned about everything, Yahweh. How many times have we heard the haq? How many times have we passed it over? How many times have we heard it and paid it no mind? Call Allah Ta'ala, kada wa kada. Ah, that's for the mu'mineen, I'm just Muslim. Ah, that's for the muhsineen, I'm just Muslim. Pay attention, mulahada. Sami'na wa ata'na. Sami'na wa ata'na. Sami'na wa ata'na. We hear and we obey. This should be things that come off of our tongue, ya akhwan. And for, di- for today, Ya Ikhwan, I want to end it with this hadith, which probably the vast majority of people, they never heard. This hadith is the reason why I'm wearing this 20-year-old thobe right now. This is my oldest thobe that I have. It's 20 years old. And I'm wearing it for a purpose. Because the Nabiya Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he went on to say, and this, this hadith is on the authority of Abu Umama, Iyas ibn Tha'laba, who said, ذكر أصحاب رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يوما عنده الدنيا فقال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم ألا تسمعون ألا تسمعون he said ألا تسمعون ألا تسمعون he went on to say will you not listen will you not listen إن بذاذة من الإيمان إن بذاذة من الإيمان He went on to say, Sallam, Will you not listen? Will you not listen? Wearing old clothes is a part of Iman. Wearing old clothes is a part of Iman. Ya Ikhwan, there's a time for us to dress up like the Prophet used to dress up when he used to meet a delegation to give da'wah or for people to see of higher levels. But the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, if you were to come into his gathering when there was a big jalsa and you looked around, he didn't have a turban to the sky. He didn't have jewels on. You couldn't distinguish who he was. He was Abdullah, ya ikhwan. And for many brothers, they think that they got it figured out. And we said on this member many times, you know, everybody were happy about the statuses that we have achieved in our lifetime. But ya ikhwan, couldn't Abdullah try to be Abdullah in your lifetime? The Nabi Sallam, he worked day and night to try to be the best servant of Allah Azza wa Jal. My dear brothers, many things can be said. 
Many people have spoken better than me on this minbar and other minbars. But for some people, when they come to the masjid, it's time to sleep in the masjid. Catch five minutes, ten minutes. And I gave the khutbah last weekend, and I tried to talk really quietly because one of the brothers said, oh, you're scaring the people. And the people started to fall asleep. And the people started to lose it. And we have to say, it's taken if you're not him, ya khwan! Wake up! The ummah is still sleeping. Ramadan just passed. The shayateen, they got locked up in Ramadan. And the question comes, ya khwan, has, have we become shayateen and now we've been let out? Because the masjids aren't filled with the worshippers of Allah like they were a few weeks ago. A brother took a picture and I ended with this. One day before the end of Ramadan, he went to the back of the masjid and he took a picture. The masjid was packed, mashallah. The month of Ramadan, we worship Allah. The next day, the same time, the brother took a picture. The shayateen or whoever they were, or whoever the people that they came to the masjid, I don't know where they are. Maybe they're believers, who knows? They're not there for Isha no more. The Lord of Ramadan is still here to be worshipped, Ya He He's the Lord of the other 11 months. But the question comes, how much Quran did we really listen to? And did it call to our heart? And did we answer the call? That's the thing. Ya yaladina amiru istajibu lillahi wa rasulah idha da'akum lima yuhyikum. Oh, you believe? Answer the call of Allah. When Allah and His Messenger call you to that which will bring your heart life. My dear brothers, make it a habit in the daytime. Let the Quran at least be in your house being recited by a qadi. It will uplift your soul, uplift your heart, and make you a better person. And we ask Allah, ya khwan, to send salat and salam on the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and make us his true followers. When we hear him say something, we say, Sami'na wa atana. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. My beautiful brother, he's going to lead us in the salat and we can hear istama' al-qawl of Allah Ta'ala. Akim as-salat wa rihamakallah.